How's it going everybody? I'm Cherokee Ronnie and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be talking about a solid axle versus independent front suspension. Now this is a question that's asked all the time, you know, which vehicle should I get? Should I get a solid axle vehicle? Should I get an independent front suspension vehicle? It honestly all depends what you're actually going to be doing with the vehicle. Now I've owned both in my day and uh, you know it's they're okay and today we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of both and we'll let you make the decision and I'll tell you what I think at the end and why I run what I run. So when it comes to the solid axle it is old technology it's like a dinosaur okay they still use it today in the Wrangler and some other vehicles and blah 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 and stuff like that but it is old technology. Now when it comes to the independent front suspension, it is new technology. It's all new and it's actually pretty amazing. When it comes to the straight axle, it's going to handle pretty much like a boat. It's going to be rough riding. When it comes to the independent front suspension, it's going to handle way better. It's going to drive smooth. It's going to ride smooth. Uh, this is off-road and on-road. It's going to feel a lot better because it's independent instead of a whole axle, you know, taking the blunt of that. So when it's independent, you know, you got, it goes like this, right? So that's your independent suspension. A straight axle, when it goes down, the whole axle has to move. So if you hit a pothole, that straight axle just absorbs all that and goes up the control arm and stuff like that. When it comes to the independent, it just hits the hole and absorbs it and keeps on going. Now, when it comes to the straight axle off-road, this is my opinion. It is better in extreme off-roading. Um, when it comes to the independent front suspension, it is very limited when it comes to extreme off-roading. And I don't know if you've ever seen a Wrangler or a Cherokee uh, anything of that nature go off-road off camber you'll see how they flex out and keep all the wheels on contact because that's what it's all about keeping traction and keep moving when it comes to uh, the independent front suspension sometimes it doesn't work like that in extreme case like this the vehicle wants to throw a wheel up in the air and you only have three wheels touching the ground now the downfall of the solid axle is you have a diff pumpkin that hangs down in the middle of your vehicle and that could get snagged on rocks and anything in that nature now the best thing about the independent front suspension they did a very good job of tucking it up inside and it's out of the way and it's hidden and it's not prone to smacking stuff like the straight axle is now like i was saying the straight axle is old technology so there's not going to be as much wheel alignment adjustments like there is on the independent front suspension the independent front suspension has a better wheel alignment and more adjustments and it therefore you can adjust it a lot better and you can get a better alignment but coming back with the straight axle it's hard to knock out of alignment honestly um, I run a straight axle and hit some stuff pretty hard and it's pretty hard to knock it out of alignment. Now when it comes to the independent front suspension, it's pretty easy to knock it out of line. Yeah, I'm sorry, but it is. I, you can beg the differ. I've had them and it seemed like, looking back on it, I seemed like I was going to the alignment shop more than I was doing anything else every time I hit something hard. So the independent front suspension is very easy to knock out of alignment. Now, when it comes to the solid axle, it's just stronger, better components, uh, better axles, better ring gear, all that stuff, it's just stronger. Um, the independent front suspension, when it comes to the diff and stuff like that, it's not as strong, and you have the CVs. I'm sorry, but it's just not as strong as the straight axle components. Um, it just can't handle the, the the punishment like a straight axle can. So when it comes to lifting the the straight axle, it's easy to lift. Okay, it's super easy to lift, and it's cheap. Um, when it comes to the independent front suspension, it's not easy to lift. It costs more money because there's more components you have to mess with. You can't go too high because you will run out of flexing room. You'll run out of travel. And if you do go over three inches, you're going to put your axles at a bind and uh, you're gonna break a lot of those. 
So there's a lot of downfalls of the independent front suspension when it comes to off-roading and lifting it. And uh, you're gonna have way more money in the independent front suspension lifting it and doing all that stuff doing all that stuff but you will run out of travel so you got to watch what you're doing there when it comes to the solid axle you can lift the thing as high as you want and technically you can get more wheel travel and more flex with the right combination of parts now like we was talking about earlier i just want to bring it up again the straight axle has a lot more flex it will flex with the right parts it will flex I don't care if you're setting at two inches, three inches, at four inches, at six inches, at eight inches, a straight axle will flex as you're going down through the trails. And it's very important to have all four wheels on the ground when you're on the trails. But when it comes to the independent front suspension, you're limited on flex and you lose traction and you get kind of tilty and it's kind of scary. So that's pretty much what I think about the solid axle versus the independent front suspension. Now, the reason why I like the solid axle over the independent front suspension because when I go out and wheel, I want to have all four wheels on the ground. I want to have that flex. I want to have security when I'm flexing out. I'm not going to roll over and I'm keeping those wheels on the ground. And I've had independent front suspension vehicles where they want to come up in the air and it can get kind of tilty and it's kind of dangerous and uh, it's kind of scary to be honest with you. Now, like I said, it depends what you're going to do. The stuff that I do, I like the solid axle. I'm not looking for comfort. I'm not looking for uh, less road noise or easy alignments or I I'm using it for off road. So I want it to perform off road. Now, to the extreme cases that front straight axle will be there and doing its job now a lot of overlanders they'll use like the toyotas and stuff like that has independent front suspension and so on and so on but they're not going to the extreme okay they're just going out overlanding they're hitting some tr the mild trails green and blue trails is pretty much all they're hitting they're going camping but i've seen some independent front suspension uh, vehicles go on some hard trails and actually complete trails that the Jeeps can complete and I'm not saying that they can't I'm not saying this is uh, this is why you shouldn't buy an independent front suspension vehicle because it can't do this I'm not saying it can't but there's just pros to cons to both of them and that's something you have to take into consideration when you're buying a vehicle a Toyota or a Jeep so that's basically the two big brands that everybody buys everybody's in a big roar about the new Bronco and you know I was hoping they was going to use the the straight axle, the solid axle, but they didn't. Even though it does good at Moab, I was just wondering if it would do good on some of the trails here in Pennsylvania, in West Virginia, in Virginia, and places like that, that really you gotta flex up to get over things, um, or you're, it's off camber and you gotta flex at the same time. So that's what goes through my mind, and that's why I've always picked Jeep over independent front suspension, because I just like the way the Jeep flexes and all that good stuff and honestly you can make both great off-roaders I'm not saying you can't so don't think I'm dogging independent front suspension that's just my opinion and I will stick with solid axle and I'm I hate to say it but every true off-road rig that you see on YouTube or TV rock crawlers they're using straight axles and they're not messing with independent front suspension. Now, if you're a trophy truck driver and you're running through the desert, I don't think I would use a straight axle. I would use independent front suspension. So there's a there's a time and a place for each one. That's your decision to make. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm Cherokee Ronnie. Stay dirty, my friends. <laughs>